We all know that protein is one of the most important parts of our diet when it comes to building muscle or losing body fat, but exactly how much protein should we be getting in a day to achieve those goals? While there may not be one exact amount of protein that I can give you to tell you, you know, you should be getting this much every single day, the research can point us towards some general recommendations that can help us to maximize our muscle growth and fat loss. And that starts with how much protein we need per day to maximize muscle protein synthesis. Most current research suggests that a total protein intake of somewhere between 1.4 to 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight per day is enough to maximize that muscle protein synthetic response. Now, the problem with this is that that's a pretty big range. For someone that's 175 pounds, this would mean that anywhere from 111 grams to 159 grams of protein could be the optimal dose. Well, this systematic review and meta-analysis on the effects of protein supplementation on lean mass does give us a little bit more clarity, stating that muscle protein synthesis is maximized by 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight per day, something that falls right in the middle of that prior recommended range. And this same recommendation can actually be seen in multiple other studies, including this one by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and Alan Aragon, that not only touches on how much protein should be consumed per day, but also how it should be divided up. The study observed the effects of spacing out your protein intake throughout the day on optimizing muscle protein synthesis, and not only found that a minimum of 1.6 grams per kilogram, up to 2.2 grams per kilogram per day should be consumed, but also that protein intake should be divided over the course of four to five meals per day to maintain elevated levels of muscle protein synthesis. So at this point, we can look at the research and kind of conclude that around 1.6 grams per kilogram of protein per day should be enough to get the most bang for your buck out of your weight training. But the question then becomes, is there ever a time when sustaining a higher protein diet than this would still be beneficial? From a bodybuilding or weight loss standpoint, should we get more protein than that minimum 1.6 grams per kilogram recommendation? Well, the short answer to this is yes, actually, or sometimes at least, because even though the 1.6 grams per kilogram per day of protein might be enough to maximize our muscle protein synthetic response, there are other benefits to protein overfeeding that might make it worth it to sustain in our diet. This can be especially helpful from a body recomposition standpoint. Because as we already know, protein is not only the most satiating macronutrient, meaning it makes you feel less hungry after you eat it, but it also has the highest thermic effect of food, which is just the amount of calories that your body burns by digesting it. So from a weight loss or bodybuilding perspective, Protein intakes that get higher than 1.6 grams per kilogram will have positive effects on body composition through increased retention of muscle mass while in a calorie deficit, more satiety from your food, and increased calorie burn. And there is a concern from some people that eating too much protein can have some kind of negative effects on your kidney health, but most research just doesn't show that to be the case. This year-long crossover study that examined the effects of high-protein diets on different health markers found no negative impacts on kidney health, liver health, or blood lipids, and that was with participants cycling between protein intakes of 2.5 grams per kilogram all the way up to 3.3 grams per kilogram, twice as high as that 1.6 gram per kilogram recommendation and four times higher than the recommended dietary allowance of protein. And the last thing that I want to touch on is which protein supplements are going to be best for maximizing muscle protein synthesis immediately after a workout. When choosing protein supplements, you want high quality protein to get the best effect out of it. And a protein is considered high quality depending on its amino acid profile, its leucine content, and its rate of absorption. Well, animal protein will almost always have an amino acid profile that resembles what we need to build muscle better than plant proteins. If you're vegan, then plant protein is a great choice, but animal protein will typically be better if it's an option for you. From there, look at rate of digestibility and leucine content, both of which have whey protein coming out ahead of casein, 
making whey protein the best choice for your post-workout protein supplementation. Of course, it's always best to get your protein from actual food sources, but using protein powders isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as you're not completely overdoing it. So to recap, a minimum of 1.6 grams per kilogram of protein per day spread out over 4 to 5 meals will best maximize muscle protein synthesis. Higher protein intake than that can be very beneficial to improving body composition, helping to maintain or even build muscle while in a calorie deficit in the right conditions. And remember, the research indicates that high protein diets aren't actually a risk for people with healthy kidneys as long as you stay hydrated and get enough calcium in your diet as well. I personally think that a good target is to aim for 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight, or 2.2 grams per kilogram per day. If you're going to use supplements after a workout, whey protein would be my choice since its higher leucine content and better digestibility will better increase that muscle protein synthetic response. Well, I hope this was helpful for you and thanks for watching. Uh, please remember to click that subscribe button and if you have any video topics that you might be interested in me making a video on, leave it in the comments section and I will see you next time.